Vapor is a 3D visualization tool for the geosciences. It's open source, you can download it at the GitHub link you see on the screen, and it's also cross-platform, so you can install it through a binary installer on Windows 10, Ubuntu 16 and 18, CentOS 7, and OS X. This is a sprint tutorial that will be very brief and give a very fast coverage of some of the features that are available in Vapor. There are other tutorials available on YouTube that go more in depth and cover all of the features in Vapor, but this one will be a very quick sprint. The first thing I'm going to do is load data into Vapor. Secondly, I'll create a volume renderer. Vapor is comprised of a series of tools that we call renderers, and each one of them uniquely depicts your data according to a color palette and opacity values. The volume renderer applies color and opacity to an entire volume within the simulation. Then I'll go over some of the basics in the viewer, how to uh, select an appropriate variable, and how to apply those color and opacity values to create a rendering similar to what we see on the right. And finally, we'll give some context to where we are in space with the image renderer, which generates a map that shows us uh, where we are in space and time. So I'll close out of my slides, and once Vapor is installed, you can apply a little uh, icon in your startup menu down here. I'll click on Vapor. This is our uh, Vapor user interface. On the right, we have what we call the visualizer window, which uh, contains the renderings as we create them. And on the left is our control panel, which uh, we use to apply the parameters necessary to create the visualizations in the visualizer window. The first thing I'll do is go to the top menu and there are two ways to bring data into Vapor. Um, you can either open a VDC if you pre-process your data and there are many benefits to doing that but I'm not going to get into that now. Uh, the second way to get data into Vapor is to import it, directly read it uh, from the raw file. So I'm going to select Wharf ARW for my Hurricane Katrina simulation. I'll go to my downloads directory and my demo directory, and I'll select one of my Wharf out files. The first thing we see is this white bounding box, which defines the volume that our simulation takes place in. We can control the perspective with the mouse. Left mouse rotates, right mouse zooms out and in, and the middle mouse button translates. To create a new renderer, I'll click on this new button, and then here are the uh, currently supported renderers in Vapor. I will click on volume, and our control panel has now been populated. Over here at the top, we see this table which contains all the renderers we've generated so far, along with an enable and disable icon. I'm going to click on that to turn my renderer on. And here we see our first volume rendering of pressure. Beneath the table, we have our variable selector. We can see that we selected the variable P by default. For the demo, I'm going to select Q cloud. And we can't see very much in our volume rendering. And the reason for this is that all the values of our Q cloud variable are completely opaque. So in order to add some transparency and actually see through our volume, get some depth into it, I'm going to click on the Appearance tab. And here we see the heart of Vapor. This is what we call the transfer function. This is what we use to apply color and opacity to whatever renderer uh, we have created. And basically how it works is that in this uh, black box we see right here, we have a probability density function. It's just how frequent different values of our cloud variable appear uh, throughout its range. So we have very few variables over here at the max uh, value of 0 0.001. In fact, so few you can't even see them. And then we have an increasing number as we approach the value of zero. The colors that are being applied to these variable values are determined by this color bar at the bottom. So low values around zero are dark blue, fading into white, and then high values are red. Opacity is controlled with this green bar. The higher up the green bar is on the y-axis, the more opaque those values of the variable will be. So if I take one of these control points and drag it down, all the values that are low in the transfer function around zero are completely transparent. 
and we ramp up our transparency as we get higher and higher until we have maximum transparency for values around 0 0.0005. We can load different color palettes with the load TF button, uh, short for load transfer function. I can select black white and I can control the values in our color bar by editing these control points. I'll click edit control point. What I'm going to do right now is invert the uh, color palette. So instead of black white, we'll be looking at white black. I'll control this control point and then turn it to black. Okay, now we have something that looks a little bit more like a cloud. So those are the basics of uh, the volume renderer variable selection and the transfer function. I'm going to create another renderer now, the image renderer. Turn it on. And we can see some land mass, but we want to be able to stretch out the domain that the image renderer is being drawn to. So one way to do that is through this uh, combo box up here. Right now we're in navigation mode, but if we go to region mode and make sure that we're selecting our image renderer in this table, we can right click on these handlebars that have appeared because we've uh, changed into region mode. And we can stretch these out so that we can clearly see we're now in the Gulf of Mexico. So those are the very basic ways to use Vapor. Again, there are more in-depth tutorials available on YouTube. So just do a YouTube search for in-car Vapor. Thank you for watching.